Wait times for Walt Disney World have been at an all-time high this year, with lightning lanes creating extra anxieties. But with the right information, you can spend more time having fun and less waiting in line. Hi, I'm the Frugal Brit, and for this video, I'm going to rank my top 10 Disney World rides that provide a reasonable window of low wait times before 5 pm, even on a busy day. Before we get into it, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for future guides, reviews, and other Orlando content. To start off, we'll make our way over to Epcot's World Showcase section, specifically the Mexico Pavilion for the Grand Fiesta Tour, starring the three Caballeros. Inspired by the similarly named movie from 1944, one of only three rides in Epcot's World Showcase. The attraction is housed within the Pyramid, which is overlooked by a surprising number of guests. This is a gentle boat ride featuring some of Mexico's most famous cities and sites and combines a backdrop of live action footage with the movie's musical score, as well as animated versions of Donald Duck, Jose Carioca and Panchito. It has been described as a Mexican It's a Small World. Now I don't think Grand Fiesta Tour will be on many people's list of favourite Disney World attractions, but the theming is really nice and the wait is always super low, it averages at 11 minutes. On a busy summer's day it will rarely go over 20 minutes. Given that World Showcase is pretty quiet in the morning, I recommend riding Grand Fiesta Tour mid-morning after you've done Frozen Ever After, maybe also after another attraction or two. For number 9, we'll remain in Epcot and head through to World Nature for the Seas with the Nemo and Friends Pavilion, which is also the same name as the ride housed inside. Despite being fairly close to the entrance, it never creates long waits. This attraction is a Finding Nemo and Dory themed dark ride. Guests sit in clams similar to the seats on Haunted Mansion. You'll be joined by Marlin and Dory for an adventure to find Nemo with some impressive technology which makes it appear as though they are swimming with the fish inside the pavilion's aquarium. Upon exiting the ride you can explore the marine life in more detail and you also have the Turtle Talk with Crush interactive show. The Seas with Nemo and Friends is definitely not the most rewarding of ride experiences, but you can walk straight onto the Clamabiles pretty much any time of day. For this reason, it gets a big thumbs up from me. On a Saturday in July, it will peak at around 5 to 10 minutes max, so you can just fit it in whenever it's most convenient for your plan. For number 8, we'll jump on the monorail over to the Magic Kingdom, all the way to the top of New Fantasyland, past Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, for another ocean-themed attraction, which is Under the Sea, Journey of the Little Mermaid. This dark ride retells the highlights from the movie, with special effects and guests boarding on clam-shaped Omnimover vehicles, so yeah, pretty similar to the previous entry in many ways. The special effects aim to give the illusion of going underwater through King Triton's undersea kingdom with a prominent Ursula animatronic, followed by the fairy tale finale. Despite being a pretty popular attraction, it never generates long wait times these days, mainly due to the efficient Omnimover system, nothing like the nearby Seven Dwarfs mine train. The average wait time is 30 minutes. On a busy day, waits do start to get high in the mid to late afternoon, so my advice is to get in line before 12. We're now going to head to the east of the park for the final ride in Magic Kingdom, which is the Tomorrowland Transit Authority People Mover, located in the centre of Tomorrowland, designed as an urban mass transit system of the future. The People Mover takes guests on a scenic tour around Tomorrowland with elevated views of several attractions, both indoor and outdoor. This is a bit of a favourite amongst Disney fans, mainly for nostalgia reasons, but casual guests are not as likely to enjoy it as much unless they're in need of a rest away from the sun. It goes the same speed throughout, so don't expect any thrills. I've always been a fan myself ever since I was a kid. I always thought it was super cool being able to go inside Space Mountain, etc. The best thing about this attraction is its moving walkway, which allows the vehicles to remain in motion at all times, which means that wait times will rarely go above 20 minutes. Times are fairly consistent throughout the day, so my advice is to head over whenever you're in need of a rest whilst visiting Tomorrowland. I will say, however, that it's great to also experience at night for the neon lights. For number six, we'll make the long journey over to Disney's Animal Kingdom for the dinosaur motion simulator dark ride based on the Disney movie of the same name, located in what is objectively the most underwhelming theme park land in Disney World, which is Dino Land USA. 
Unfortunately, this attraction does not disappoint. A really impressive queue featuring dinosaur exhibits, a giant Carnotaurus fossil, a humorous pre-show. The ride involves a turbulent journey through the late Cretaceous period featuring prehistoric scenes populated with dinosaur, audio, animatronics and brilliant special effects. Do keep in mind though that many of these effects and loud noises may be a bit too much for sensitive kids. Unlike the other attractions listed so far, Dinosaur has quite a small window of low wait times unfortunately, which is why I've put it in the bottom half of the ranking. It has a pretty high average wait time of 35 minutes. If you get there early, before 10, expect wait times below 20 minutes. On a busy day, they do get as high as 50 minutes in the late morning and don't adequately calm down until 5ish. For this reason, I think it's a great ride experience to do first thing in the morning or at least within the first hour and a half. Failing that, I recommend heading over in the early evening. To start the second half, we'll be heading back to Epcot for my controversial number 5 pick, which is the Soaring Flying Theatre attraction located inside the Land Pavilion in between the Imagination and the Seas pavilions. Soarin' is a multi-sensory simulation ride with guests strapped into hand gliders and lifted 40 feet in the air, with your feet dangling freely in front of a 180 degree IMAX projection dome. You'll experience wind, sound and even smell special effects throughout the ride through the locations including the Great Wall of China, the Egyptian Pyramids and Sydney Harbour. Some say Soarin' is overrated, I think it still holds up as one of Disney's best attractions. It definitely deserves to be higher in this list, however it has much much longer wait than all other picks. Its average wait time is 41 minutes which peaks at around 70 minutes in the late morning of a busy summer day. You're likely questioning why I've included it in this video, but wait times will drop significantly in the late afternoon as with many of the attractions outside of World Showcase. So because of this, combined with how beautiful and rewarding the attraction is, I think it is worth taking the liberty here. I also hope that once Cosmic Rewind gets its own standby line, weights will reduce even further. A short walk from Soarin' is the impossible to miss Spaceship Earth Geodesic Sphere Dark Ride attraction located in the World Celebration Land right at the front of the park entrance. This will always be the symbolic structure of Epcot. Inside, guests board Omnimover ride vehicles for a 15 minute ride on a time machine themed experience demonstrating how advancements in human communication have helped to create the future one step at a time. Interactive screens in the vehicles let you customise the ending animated video and the post-show area has a number of cool games and exhibits. I think I'll always be a fan of Spaceship Earth, although I will admit it's crying out for a refresh. There was supposed to be one before the pandemic which is currently on hiatus. Given the location in front of the entrance, it gets a lot of attention in the morning, but by the afternoon most guests have either already experienced it or are drawn to World Showcase. The average wait time is 19 minutes, it peaks in the mid-morning at around 30 minutes. My advice is to do as much of World Showcase in the morning before heading to Spaceship Earth early in the afternoon. For number 3, we're headed for Animal Kingdom's flagship attraction, which is Kilimanjaro Safaris, located inside Africa's Harambe Wildlife Preserve, which aims to recreate the East African savannah through varying landscapes. Guests board tall, open vehicles before entering the simulated habitat. The drivers will point out various African species throughout the journey, which are cleverly isolated away from guests with disguised fences and boundaries. Many who have experienced a real-life African safari, which does not include me, point to its realism. One of the cool things about this attraction for those that plan is that the animals tend to be more active when the queues are at their lowest, so that would be first thing in the morning or late in the evening. If you jump in line outside of these times, you'll have to endure some of the park's longest wait times. They average at 55 minutes, peaking to an hour and a half for a mid-afternoon in the summer. Fortunately, between 3 and 5 p.m., wait times drop exponentially. And if you head on just before it closes for the day, which is usually before most other attractions, there'll often be no wait. There is an argument to prioritise it first thing in the morning, as the animals are more active whenever it's cooler at this time. 
It's also not open for early theme park entry, so day guests don't get left behind when rope dropping. But personally, I think heading over at the latest possible time is your best bet. And when you're finished, you can make your way over to Pandora for the last hour. For my second best ride with low wait times, we'll finally make the trip over to Disney's Hollywood Studios. We'll be heading to the back lot part of the Echo Lake area for Star Tours The Adventure Continues, which is a 3D motion simulator ride set in the Star Wars universe. This is the only attraction in this list from Hollywood Studios, which tells you a lot about its issues today. The ride's impressive exterior represents an Ewok village on the forest moon of Endor with a giant Atat walker greeting guests. Inside the spaceport, guests walk past audio animatronic C-3PO and R2-D2 droids. Once guests board the Star Speeder 1000, guests experience a turbulent trip across the galaxy piloted by the reluctant C-3PO. The ride uses 50 combinations of randomised opening and ending scenes from episode 1 to episode 9, so you're unlikely to see the same segment twice. Due to the large capacity of Star Tours, it has a high turnover of guests, so wait times remain low despite its enduring popularity. The average wait time is 24 minutes, which was much higher than I expected, as I rarely wait this long. Although you do often find that after guests exit the Indiana Jones Stunt Spectacular show, wait times do temporarily go up. On a busy day between 12 and 3 p.m., wait times can peak at around 35 minutes, but they do ease in the late afternoon, which is the best time to visit. For my best attraction with low wait times at Disney World, I've gone for Expedition Everest Legend of the Forbidden Mountain roller coaster, the visual focal point of Animal Kingdom's Asia Land and its fictional kingdom of Anandapur, themed around the Yeti protecting the Forbidden Mountain next to Mount Everest. The queue begins at the office of the fictional Himalayan Escapes Travel Agency and later led through the Yeti Museum. Your train will take you on a ride through rolling hills, an ancient temple. You'll head backwards where a Yeti is waiting for you. This is arguably Disney's most ambitious attraction of all time. There was absolutely no expense spared. Whilst I can't say I love the backwards portion of the ride, it's easily in my top five best rides. It has an average wait of 37 minutes, but this will creep up to 60 minutes in the early afternoon on a busy day. However, within the first hour and a half in the morning, waits are pretty low, and between 3 and 5, they'll drop to 20 minutes. This is quite a common theme in Animal Kingdom. I honestly think the best kept secret for Disney World is visiting Animal Kingdom in the late afternoon. Outside of the holidays and summer months, it feels like there's hardly anyone in the park outside of Pandora, leaving the rest of the park with low wait times. To be honest though, when it comes to Expedition Everest, I kind of like a bit of a cue as it's an excuse to take in the incredible theming it has to offer. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Do check out my other Disney World and Universal videos to help with any planning. And if you're interested in future Orlando content, don't forget to subscribe.